Our next panelist is uh, Marissa Lawler, who's with uh, the San Antonio chapter of National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. She's our co-sponsor on this panel. Yeah. Invaluable. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm Marissa Lauper. I have I, I had some prepared thoughts, so I'll just read it. Um, I'm a mother, full-time student, organizer, current board member, and current board member of San Antonio Normal. I got involved because I wanted to find like-minded individuals who believed in working on creating a movement in Texas. I also saw the momentum shifting in the country, as did most of us here. I thought I would seek out the local normal group and suggest that we have a march. I worked on many different issues prior to getting involved with Normal, and I wanted to understand the connection between over-policing in, in the streets, nonviolent offenders in prison who were disproportionately black and brown, as well as the tremendous suffering in Mexico and Central America because of the drug and refugee enforcing policies. Basically, I believe in self-determination and to have a voice on this racist matter. It's not a question of whether it is going to be legalized, but a question of how and when. A little bit about the, the war on drugs. There are five million people under correctional control in the United States. We are putting people behind bars when we should be treating them for addiction and finding ways to correct a racially influenced economic caste system. Essentially, the drug war is the new Jim Crow, and it creates sex, second class citizenship for drug offenders who are disproportionately black and brown. Black people are 14% of the regular drug users but are 37% of those arrested for drug offenses. Black people serve also as much time in federal prison for drug offenses as do whites for a violent offense. They are, they are more likely to be stopped, searched, arrested, prosecuted, uh, convicted, and incarcerated for drug law violations than whites. Police officers who are pressed for high arrest quotas, racial, uh, they racially profile and they, they over-police urban areas low-income communities and communities of color. Once in the system, they are affected in some way or another for the rest of their lives. Uh, in Bexar County, the arrest rate is 160 for black residents per 1,000 uh, versus 79 for non-blacks per 1,000. In 2013, almost 3% of all black males were imprisoned compared to 5% of all white males. One in three Hispanic adults have been imprisoned. One in nine black men, ages 20 to 34, have been in prison. There are mandatory minimums and harsher sentences for uh, crack versus cocaine. Uh, coke use is 12% and, and crack use is 4%, but the people that are using crack are, are getting arrested multiple times uh, throughout their lives. Uh, it, it has been reduced to 20 to 1 ratio. It used to be 100 to 1, now it's 20 to 1, and that comes with, uh, with activism and, re and the reform movement. Um, the policies that just discriminate against people uh, basically will, they'll, they'll, they make you into a second class citizen. Uh, pretty much, you won't get, you can't get, or you can't get a job, but it's a lot harder if you didn't have that problem. Uh, you lose your voting rights. Uh, also, you're inel ineligible for business loans, trade licensing, gun ownership, student aid, and even public housing or other public uh, assistance. And so, uh, I wanted to also. Uh, mention women in the prison industrial complex. Uh, black women are three times more likely to go to prison than white women. More than three quarters of, of the women behind bars are mothers. Many of them are sole caregivers. Women of color are disproportionately affected by social stigma, the conspiracy offense laws, regulations that bar people from public assistance who have a conviction, and by the drug treatment systems that are designed for men. Conspiracy offenses meant to target criminal networks have actually hurt women the most. The women could be uh, nothing more than just a li living with a husband or boyfriend involved in uh, some, drug, some level of drug sales. Harsh man mandatory minimum sentencing may, may keep them uh, behind bars for 20 to life. The, the drug war punishes women, particularly mothers, uh, not just for drug law violations, but also uh, just for, you know, just they, they, they punish them if they even use uh, drugs. And, you know, cannabis is, a, is actually uh, very therapeutic and, and helpful to many people. Uh, and that's partly my job, is to educate people on this. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to wrap it up real quick. Um, basically, it's 40 years and $40 trillion spent on fighting the drug war. It hasn't reduced drug use. It hasn't 
reduced overdose deaths or uh, disease transmissions, but it has created uh, second-class citizenship, and that needs to change. Basically, I, I work in San Antonio Normal as, as a, for a, a, a specific thing that I'm doing with them, as opposed to just, in general, uh, working with different organizations in the city. So I stay focused when, when I think about the work that I'm doing with Normal. Uh, we have monthly meetings, and we do go up to the Capitol when it's the legislative session, which is going to be 2017. So for 2015, we, there were 11 bills that were introduced, and we'd head up there and uh, go and talk to legislators and call them and meet with them in, in, uh, in the city. Uh, but you know, the, there is so much work to do, just, just working on trying to reform marijuana laws in Texas. Governor Abbott is one of the biggest problems, and we actually need to create a campaign to get him out of office in 2018. That would, that would improve our lives vastly, not just the, the possibility of, of legalizing one day in the state, in the state but, to, but to really improve our communities. I mean, if we want to do all these things, we can't have people at, that are the gatekeepers that are keeping a lot of this progress from happening. So we need to identify people that, that are, not, are not helping uh, they're not worthy of that office, and they need to be kicked out, basically, or voted out, rather. Um, so uh, we meet every third Thursday of the month, and we're meeting at Telos Tex-Mex January 21st from 7 to 10. It, you can have a, a bite to eat there, and uh, you know it's a great it's a great time to get get together. We're actually registering people to vote uh, this this coming meeting, which is January 21st, 7 to 10, at Telos Tex-Mex. That's 12403 West Avenue. And uh, what we'd like to see is just more people to get involved in doing the grunt work that's necessary to organize all the people in San Antonio uh, that care about this issue and how it's related to the war on drugs and how it's related to mass incarceration and police brutality and what's going on in Mexico. So there, are the, it's the one issue I can pull everything together into and say that's one thing I can focus on and getting more, I would think more people would really want to support this and be, you know, be the foot soldiers to getting this taken care of in, in, in Texas. Uh, we, we will be having a march in May. Uh, marches are always a, a fun, visible way to show support and to galvanize people. Uh, it's, de it's generally just very symbolic, but at the same time, it, it gives you an opportunity to talk about the issues, all these issues that we're talking about. And uh, so last year was our first march uh, in, the, in the recent past. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. And we had 300 people. And uh, you know, it, it just was a way to say, we'd like to take back our communities. You know, it doesn't just mean you want marijuana to smoke. You're really doing it because people need it. They're, they're sick and they need it for medical care, anxiety, depression, uh, whatever, whatever ails them. We're, they're, not, they're considered a criminal because they, want, they need to use it for medicine. So we need to change that, as well as uh, to decriminalize the possession of it. Because